What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia. Huge thanks to Alfa Romeo for providing me with this beautiful Giulia to review for you guys today. So about the 2017 Giulia, well brand new here and it is just so exciting that one, this thing is available in the United States and two, it's just such an impressive vehicle. I already did a quick drive video on one of these a couple of months ago and was so blown away just in a quick 10 or 15 minute drive of just how good this thing drives. Um, but as far as the looks, I mean, it looks just as good as it drives. I mean, just a beautiful look from every single angle. I love, you know, this uh, aggressive but elegant looking front end you have here with these slender headlights. Uh, you have the Shield uh, Alfa Romeo grille there that is just so cool looking and very unique compared to all the other stuff out there in the automotive uh, segment here. And then going down to the sides and the back, just again, you can't find a bad angle on this vehicle. It just looks so good. I love the taillights. I love the exhaust tips, the way they come out of that rear diffuser that's very nicely sculpted. And it's just got these curves to it. You know, it's not super hard edged and, uh, you know, a futuristic and aggressive looking. It's just a beautiful shape that's very modern, um, but still just kind of timeless in a lot of ways as well. And overall, I think it's just an excellent and beautiful looking vehicle. Right, so the interior of the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia. Well, it is so cool in here. Uh, really perfect for an enthusiast. So anyway, first things first, seeing that in these seats. Well, red leather, as you can see here, which is a beautiful combination because it doesn't just uh, extend to the seats. It goes uh, beyond over to the dashboard here where it's uh, more red leather on the uh, underside. You have it on the door cards. You have red stitching on the leather dashboard, uh, which is part of the extra charge uh, leather package, which is just uh, worth every penny uh, and just looks so good. Uh, but anyway, getting back to these seats, um, really cool seats. They're just really comfortable. I like the little ridges you have here in them. Um, and they have adjustable torso bolstering as well, so you can make it as wide or as uh, tight as you want. And even for a thin guy like myself, they can really hug you in uh, pretty nice and snug here. And so really great uh, bolstering there. And even the thigh bolstering comes up pretty high for, you know, even a sports sedan. It's pretty aggressive seats, uh, much more than you get in a lot of the other competitors. And so overall, yeah, they just really hug you in place well, but they still have enough width that, you know, like I said, they can be comfortable for all body types, but overall just spectacular seats. Next to the steering wheel in the Julia, which is really cool. Again, just so unique. Uh, I love it's got a flat bottom to it. It has really a cool textured area around the nine and three grip here where your thumbs go. It has an excellent nine and three grip, by the way. Uh, tiny little 10 and two notches, but just a nice, uh, slightly thinner wheel compared to, again, some of the competition, which is overly thick and bolstered in an uh, attempt to try and make it seem more aggressive. This doesn't need any of that. It's just really just a good wheel. Feels great to, you know, use here with the 93 grip. Uh, and it has these glorious, glorious aluminum paddle shifters that are mounted to the steering column, not the wheel. And they're just enormous. I mean, they would, you know, feel perfectly in place in a Ferrari or something. Just massive paddles. So cool. They just feel really substantial and heavy and thick. Awesome. Uh, and then another cool thing, you have the engine start stop button on the steering wheel here. Again, very similar to something like a Ferrari. Um, and so just cool, just very unique little things that differentiate this so much over the competition. And again, for an enthusiast uh, perspective, I think it's just a very cool and much sportier and more exciting uh, you know, driver zone here than you get in a lot of the other competition. And that continues on to the gauges here, the awesome gauges in the Julia. Um, you have the two large uh, dials there on the left and the the right for your basics. You have a little uh, digital gauge there for your coolant and for your um, fuel. And then in the middle there, you have a little digital portion, um, which is fairly simple, actually, even more simple than most vehicles. Um, you just have a digital speedometer. You have a tri little trip computer thing there, which also will show your miles per gallon. And then you have also a graph of your average MPG um, that'll uh, display there for you. And that's it. Just those three things. Uh, no performance metrics, um, but it does look good. It's a high resolution screen. Um, and the gauges, I just love the fonts on them and uh, so overall though that doesn't have a lot of features it's very attractive it has all the basics that you need and overall really good coming over to the center of the dashboard here i first have to comment on the lack of buttons uh this is the least amount of buttons i've seen in a center area in a long time i think it's just really minimalistic but still beautiful and stylish as well but right up top here you have this uh large i think it's 8.8 .8 inch widescreen display here um that looks really good uh you know it is a little bit dim i will say i've, I've been trying to like turn it up the bright it has this black background so it's a little darker um, 
but you know, it just has the basics again, like not super feature packed like some of the other stuff, even within FCA's portfolio, but it has all their gauges and stuff built in. This doesn't have any of that kind of stuff. There is no FCA part sharing here with the Alpha. That's one thing. Not a single switch or anything feels like it's out of any kind of Dodge or Chrysler or Jeep. Uh, it's totally unique to Alfa Romeo, so there isn't any part sharing, even though this is under the FCA umbrella. Um, but anyway, getting back to this infotainment system, has all the basics, you know, satellite radio. The navigation, I have to say, is a very nice nice uh, widescreen map there that does look very good and fills out this screen nicely. Otherwise, though, it seems like this large screen is a little underutilized. It just has, you know, some minimal graphics, um, but it looks good overall and gets the job done. Um, and for 2018, this is a 2017, so it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but for 2018, I think that is something they are adding. It's like a rolling update, and it might be available for the 17s down the road. I'm not sure, but CarPlay is in the cards and Android Auto, so uh, that'll really help to make this infotainment system a lot better as well, so you can just use your phones. Uh, you know, interface, and that's all good. Uh, it isn't It isn't touchscreen, though. That's the only thing I can complain about as well. Um, you have to use this little controller down here, which is fine. It has some kind of touch thing on the top of it. And, I mean, it works well enough. You know, if you have been used to any kind of MMI or, uh, you know, thing from any Mercedes, Audi, BMW, you'll feel right at home with this. But, anyway, coming down uh, to the air vents here, again, just simple. And then you have your climate control knobs here with the three knobs. Uh, very, again, straightforward and easy to use, and it'll reflect the temperature here up on the screen. Um, but you can just control everything right here with the buttons and really simple straightforward a couple other little knobs You have your uh, drive mode selector down here with a DNA selector I guess is what they call it and is natural a I think it's like an automatic uh, kind of hyper mileing mode And there's dynamic of course is what the D is there And there's another little button here for a softer suspension setup So you can still have the dynamic settings and then have the suspension in the soft mode Which I'm gonna I think really appreciate here on some of the rougher roads We have around Pittsburgh here and so overall just nice to have that customization then on the right hand side here you have a little volume knob um, and one thing I will say about the volume and even the uh, menu knob here for the infotainment is that they're a little loose and wiggly I wish they were a little firmer feeling a little higher quality um, that is one little area where it kind of falls short of the competitors as far as storage space in the Julia it's uh, I would say average or maybe slightly below average as far as you know uh, these uh, sports sedan segment goes um, anyway first thing in the doors here you have a pretty good sized map pocket with a bottle holder which is good to all always have. Uh, coming over to the center here, you have just a single USB jack just hanging out in there um, with a block off plate and then you have um, this little cover. You slide back and you have your two cup holders which are a very good size, nice and deep cup holders um, and so well done job there. Um, but that's basically it. There is no other center cubbies. Um, I feel like if they would have rearranged the gear shifter position and things like that they might have been able to open up uh, some other uh, space here so you could put your phone or something uh, somewhere other than in a cup holder. Um, there is is also by your left knee another little thing that opens up here um, it's not quite large enough to fit sunglasses but you can fit your, you know, your wallet and things like that in there anyway and then you have this uh, center armrest which is nice and softly padded feels really great and uh, you open that up and then you'll find another uh, area down here where you will be able to fit sunglasses cell phone things like that in there there's also another USB jack an auxiliary jack in there and a power outlet you also have a little coin holder up here in the top and uh, it's not a large uh, cubby but it's uh, large enough like I said to fit all the things you need to fit in there and so overall a pretty good space there at least backseat space in the Julia is again maybe slightly uh, subpar compared to the competition um, but still certainly usable I'm five foot nine me sitting behind myself I probably have two closer to three inches of legroom to spare there. So, I mean, totally usable, you know, I, but if I, I think if you were trying to load up this car with uh, several people that were all six feet tall or over, you know, it might be a bit of a, a cramped uh, area, but otherwise, you know, like I said, it's it's going to be totally usable for most people, I think. Um, it has a nice back seat as well. You, you'll also find air vents back there, another USB jack. There's a full down center armrest um, with two cup holders. Headroom, by the way, for the back uh, is a little bit on the tighter side compared to again some of the competition once again um, but I still have about an inch or two of headroom to spare as well and so overall you know totally usable trunk space in the Julia is probably not the top of its class either it's certainly a very usable trunk you can easily fit you know two to three suitcases in there it has a nice wide opening um, there's it's a little bit of a narrow trunk though that's the only thing you know it's a wide opening but then once you actually get to the trunk there uh, I wish there was a little more space off to the sides uh, but overall like I said still easily fit two to three suitcases in there and if you need more 
lower cargo area. Those rear seats do fold down. Uh, just you pull those little levers there. And then you have a lot more cargo space there if you don't need the back seat. And so nice to have that additional versatility and overall still a very usable trunk. All right, so start I'm going for a drive. The uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia has this pretty chunky. It's a thick key. Look at that. Um, but it's got a nice weight to it. It's got some metal on it here and uh, your basic buttons there on the back. Um, and of course, it's keyless entry and push button starts. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button on the steering wheel here, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia Ti. So the first thing you know is a couple of things you notice right off the bat. Uh, first is uh, the steering ratio is super quick here in the Giulia, and so it just takes way less effort to do any kind of turn, whether it's in a parking lot or on a back road. Uh, it's just so much quicker with the steering response, and it's just something that immediately makes it feel super sporty and very cool. Another thing you notice right off the bat is the visibility in the Giulia is very good. You have a large windshield with a hood that drops down nicely so very easy to see over that. View out of the sides is pretty good. You have a B pillar right next to uh, where you turn your head, um, but of course you have blind spot monitoring here as a, a part of a package, so the static assistance package, I think only like 650 bucks for blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic detection, which is really nice just for the basics. So you don't have to have the full autonomous stuff if you don't want. Uh, another thing you notice as I'm using my turn signal here, is the turn signal stock is like really close to the uh, paddle shifter here and that's just part of the price of these glorious huge paddle shifters um it doesn't really get in the way it's not an annoyance just something you notice like oh they're just really close to each other um so just a little interesting thing to note here um other things though uh, visibility out of the back window is also very good you have a very large uh rear window there great you know right on par with what you expect from any other sedan in this segment and uh, very easy to see out of the back as well but i'm gonna the window down put it into dynamic mode we'll put the uh, we'll put the gear selector in automatic still but let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does and here we go there we go first gear <laughs> there we go the turbo kicks in <laughs> and then it takes off man this thing flies so this uh, Alfa Romeo Giulia, the standard TIs here, have a two liter uh, four cylinder turbocharged engine uh, that does 280 horsepower, 306 pound feet of torque, um, and it'll do zero to 60 in uh, 5.7 seconds here for the rear wheel drive version, which is what I'm currently driving. The all wheel drive version uh, will do 5.4 seconds, thanks to its additional grip there. Um, and so, but yeah, still a very respectable power figure for, again, you gotta remember this is the base uh, model uh, luxury uh, sports sedan here. This is isn't the higher performing quadrifolio with its, you know, like 3.8 seconds here to 60. This is just, you know, the standard Julia, And so still very quick performance. The only thing that's interesting about this engine is that it's got a very low red line of 5,500 RPMs, which is almost diesel-like with how low it is. Um, so the, the, the meat of the power band in this engine is, you know, like 2,500 RPMs up to, you know, four or five. Um, I mean, just cruising here in the threes, you know, 3,000 to 3,500, it really pulls strong. <laughs> and the great thing is you have the eight-speed uh, ZF automatic transmission, which is one of the best out there. And I'm so glad they just went with the ZF because it is just such a quick transmission. Very smart and intelligent, too. I mean, it took a second to figure out I wanted to do a zero to 60 run there. Um, but then whenever you go into the manual mode here, we'll just try it out. I mean, immediate. get a nice firm upshift too here at least in dynamic mode very sporty feeling again it's like it's almost immediate I mean it is really perfect for a torque converter automatic it doesn't really get much better than the ZF8 speed it is just one of the best and man this thing really gets up to speed quickly though I gotta say uh, this is also riding on uh, Michelin uh, I think they're the uh, pilot sport all-season tires so not the uh, sport fours there but it is you know a very good tire here the pilot all seasons um, and so yeah it's a very very nice uh, feeling thing even just to cruise around in so far but right, let's do another acceleration. This time I'm doing it in manual mode, so we're gonna force it to start in first. Here we go. Yeah, that's where it goes. <laughs> and although it's like an indicated 5,500 RPM red line, it really actually goes a little bit beyond there. Um, I'd say it's more like 5,750 or something, because it will go beyond 5,500. Um, and it just, it's a quick revving engine too that just really feels eager, uh, just ready to go, especially in dynamic mode. It just feels awesome. Well, we're coming up to some tighter corners here and let's see how the Julia handles them. So again, this really quick 
steering just really helps out. <laughs> all right, so we got a little bit of slide from these tires. I think it's because they're all seats. If you actually put summer tires on this, it would have a little more grip, but I mean, it is still just going around these corners way quicker than uh, most other vehicles uh, go around these corners in. It just really is point and shoot. Wow, it's almost frightening just how sharp it is. It's just like, can I get away with more? You just feel like you can do more and more and more and keep pushing it. Um, and it just, it's taking it easily. It's just like hustling through these corners. Man, other things to note, brake pedal, it uh, doesn't have a ton of feel to it, um, but does work pretty well. Um, just, it's got a little bit of a dead travel. And then once you start getting into the pad, um, even then it's a little bit vague as far as how much braking action you're actually uh, giving it. You know, it's a, a little, slightly disconnected, I guess I could say, um, but still works totally fine. Throttle response is perfect, but really sharp. And there isn't really any turbo lag that I'm noticing either. I mean, uh, there's a little bit of time before you go full boost but you know a lot of uh, engines the throttle response really gets a disconnect uh, with the turbo motor and it just feels like you're always waiting around for one thing or the other this there isn't any waiting it seems like it's a lot more immediate with the throttle response and it actually feels pretty naturally aspirated as far as the throttle goes um, but man oh man this thing is really <laughs> really an impressive handler it's just crazy and it's especially crazy considering this is only running 225 wide tires up front and 255 in the rear considering this is you know the rear wheel drive version um, but it's doing a really good job here I'm really really impressed with it another acceleration now this is a rear wheel drive car but it's really neutral it's not really uh, sliding around or giving me any crazy wheel spin again we're only dealing with 280 horsepower 306 pound-feet of torque but it really it doesn't have any fuss or wheel spin it just puts all the power to the ground and does it all very efficiently as well but <laughs> This thing, I'm just so impressed with how it's handling. I just, I feel a little bit of, uh, I'm not even sure what the word is, marshmallowiness, I guess, from the tires. I can just feel the tires are, you know, wiggling a little bit. And that's the only thing that's uh, keeping this from being 100% totally razor sharp. I think the tires, you put some actual summer tires on this and um, it's just going to be basically perfect because it already is basically perfect even on all seasons. It's just so impressive. I keep looking down like, wow, I am able to go around these corners way faster than I am, you know, thinking I can go around them. It's just, man, oh man, this thing just, it just tears up and just eats up a back road. Oh man, it's just loving this. There's hardly any body roll. It's just so, so good. <laughs> this is like, I man, this is so much fun on the back road. You can clearly see I'm like having the time of my life. Uh, it's, it's been a while since I've been in a four-door car that had, I had that much fun going down that road. Um, man, oh man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just a little speechless. This thing did even better than I was expecting it to. All right, so now we've clearly established that the Julia is pure magic on a back road, uh, just a scalpel of a car. But you know, normal da daily driving stuff, just cruising around on a normal uh, you know back road here without too many corners. Uh, it is also very good at this task too. You know, even in dynamic mode here, still with the uh, dampers in their stiffer setting, it's still very smooth and uh, comfortable, even on roads that aren't perfect. You know, like this one's a little bit rougher, not super smooth, and still just, it's a really good cruiser too. The only thing I can say is I wish that uh, the transmission was a little quicker to downshift. It kind of wants to hang out in the current gear a little too long uh, before it finally kicks down and gives me the downshift I want. But of course, obviously, since this is a wonderful paddle shift, uh, you know, ZF automatic, you can just manually shift it yourself and never have that issue. But thanks Alfa Romeo, I'm gonna have the Julia here for an entire week, so I'm gonna drive it all over the place, and I'll come back and give you guys my final thoughts on uh, you know how it drives, some thoughts on the stereo, as well as my final MPG for the week, and uh, all my other thoughts on the Julia. It should be a fun week, I'm pretty excited. All right, so I've been driving the Alfa Romeo Julia for a couple more days here. I uh, put about 130 miles on it, and man, I absolutely love this thing. It is just, it's not perfect, but it is just so much fun. It's one of those cars that you just want to keep driving. You want to find, I can't, over the course of the week, I've kept finding excuses to go driving and go the long way home and find unnecessary reasons to go run errands and all that kind of stuff because it's just that much fun to drive. It's one of those cars that's truly addicting to drive. Uh, it's also addicting to look at. I mean, every time you park it, I personally just had to turn around and look at it every time I walked away. I mean, it's just one of those cars uh, that really just, uh, just really works its way into your heart. Um, and it's just, 
like I said, it's fantastic. I think one of the things that really sets it apart from all the rest is just the quick steering ratio. It's 11.8 to one. That combined with the low seating position and just the, the tightness of the suspension, it just makes it feel just totally a worlds apart from all the other sports sedans out there that just, uh, most of them don't even come close to this. Uh, the Germans in particular, all of them feel way softer, way more sluggish and lazy than this does. I think the only thing that kind of comes relatively close to as good of handling as the Julia is the uh, Cadillac ATS-V. But even that feels heavier, it uses wider tires. This is just has this purity to it, this simplicity to it, where you know, you're know you on skinnier tires. Um, it's not like a super lightweight vehicle, but it feels that way. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it isn't heavy by any means. I think it's what, like 3,500 pounds, but it's just like the quick steering and then this tight suspension to keep up with the quick steering um, so that, you know, even though you're pitching it into a corner, it doesn't wallow all over the place. And so it just really, uh, everything feels so tight so it, like I get, it feels like you're driving a car that's a thousand pounds lighter than it is it really is that huge of a difference um, and it just it's just amazing to drive this one has the performance package on it as well so um, you know that gives you the mechanical limited slip differential the adjustable dampers um, which have been really really good and I honestly um, I tried to fiddle with the button to change the damping a little bit but it just is so good in every circumstance in normal mode it's very good in dynamic it's very good but it's never too harsh it's never too rough uh, I, you know it's a great highway cruiser I was cruising last night on the highway in it a good bit and it's just really nice to just roll on the miles I I mean, it is buttery smooth, so it is totally a luxury sports sedan as well. It still feels very luxurious, very refined, um, but it's just amazing to drive. And it's just, yeah, it's definitely far and away, um, you know, the best of these uh, luxury sports sedans out there as far as handling goes. It just cannot be beat. Um, so, some things I didn't love about the Julia, though, in my week of driving it. Um, well, the first thing is this infotainment system. Uh, it's fine for all the basics, uh, but it's, that's really all it's good for uh, is the basics. You know, like I said, you don't have the, the uh, smartphone integration with CarPlay or Android Auto. Um, and it's just a little more basic than like an iDrive system or something. It doesn't have as many features. Um, and it's just, uh, I don't know, it just didn't really uh, do it for me. I honestly was so enraptured in the driving experience. I didn't even want to mess with the infotainment system in this vehicle. The Harman Kardon sound system sounds fine. Again, nothing to write home about in my opinion. Another thing though about the Julia is that I wish it had a little more sound to it. That is one thing driving wise. Um, it, again, nitpicking here big time, but uh, you know, it would be nice to have a little more sound. You get a little bit of growl, but not as much as I remembered in my little quick drive video. It just seems a little more muted. Obviously, you can uh, do an exhaust, and that's an easy fix. Uh, but just, you know, wish you had a little more growl from the factory since it is such a great sounding engine. You do hear a little bit of it, but like I said, you could always uh, use more, in my opinion. Uh, but one bigger thing about the driving experience, the only thing about the driving experience that slightly mars it, in my opinion, is the braking. Uh, the braking is just imprecise that's really just simply it's simply imprecise um, you know it's just it takes a lot of effort and then you have to like let off of your braking because then it wants to go like it progressively gets harder and harder with its braking even if you're on a steady brake pedal it's just like it's really unpredictable and it actually makes it a little bit of a challenge to come to a smooth stop predictably every single time in the Julia and uh, even my wife was commenting like man this car like brakes really rough and I'm like yeah I'm trying to be smooth but it's like really hard to come to a smooth stop in this vehicle. I um, mean, any other vehicle you basically get in uh, has an easier brake pedal to modulate. Um, and again, I don't know if that, there's just some software thing there or what it is with the brakes. Um, it's again, it's not a huge deal. I have gotten used to it over the week of driving, so it's not um, a huge deal. I could certainly live with it because everything else about this car outshines that uh, imperfection uh, easily. But just, you know, the braking isn't perfect um, by any means. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, I really love this thing, and uh, yeah, you know, there's, you know, the uh, fit and finish and things like that aren't the best, but honestly, as far as, you know, reliability, because that's something everyone loves to talk about with Alphas is reliability, and uh, I haven't had a single issue with this Julia in the week that I've had. Uh, it has been flawless, no quirks, no weird things, no head-scratching moments, It's it's been totally dead reliable no issues whatsoever um and so uh yeah you know i think it's uh it's a really good thing and uh i'm hoping that more and more people take the risk because that's the thing with the julia is it's you know it's the new one out there's the newcomer and so it's uh, you know it 
goes against the established status quo and I love that about it and I hope that you know more people join in with the Julius here because I think it's a such a fun and quite honestly better alternative to many of the other sports sedans out there. No, the interior might not be quite as nice as all the softer Germans and whatnot, but uh, I think, you know, if interior isn't your number one priority, this is certainly worth, uh, you know, definitely at least taking for a test drive and checking out. But anyway, huge thanks once again to Alfa Romeo for providing me with this Julia to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts about the Julia in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.